Welcome to Bloomberg Law on Demand. I'm Lee Pacquia. Law firm profits are up, according to a report by the American lawyer, and the news has people wondering if the legal profession has finally turned the corner. Joining me now to discuss, Robin Farzad, writer at Business Week and newly dejected Lakers fan. Robin, wow. sorry about the Lakers. You had to bring that up. Ah, I just feel like I have to. So, did I get this right? Has big law turned the corner? I mean, this report looks pretty positive. Well, I think, it, you know, with, with certain pruning that I think was unthinkable in previous years because you could count on this being a corporate law being a decidedly acyclical or countercyclical business, right? You advise uh, big corporations on M&A and, and all sorts of excess in boom times and in down times. You have shareholder lawsuits and bankruptcies. Right. Uh, but what happened this time around in 2008, which, which really showed was different in so many different respects, um, you had big companies suddenly saying that they were not going to pay premium law firm uh, billables right. for associates. Which scared the pants off the industry. Right. I mean, it just sent waves of terror through every law student, young lawyer out there. Right. And we saw profits per partner, which is the preferred metric in 2008, fall nearly 5%. That's where I wanted to go next. That was an interesting metric. I mean, that's often bandied about in the, in the legal profession. What do you make of the use of profits per partner as the, uh, the benchmark? It seems somewhat fair. I mean, as an apples to apples benchmark, I mean, we, you know, in, in, in uh, corporate earnings arcana, we talk about earnings per share. And if there's a way of unifying this, of course, partners cost the most. Equity partners are creme de la creme and that, that they could take a slice of, of, of profits and the equity value of a law firm. Um, but uh, I think it used to be fudged because every emphasis was on the numerator of that right. profits over partners because the bottom, I mean, the denominator was untouchable. And so all you had to do was goose on the profits. You'd lard it up. You'd bring on associates. You'd bring on paralegals and make each partner uh, effectively throw off more in terms of individually represented profits. Now they realize that, as I said before, that, that companies weren't willing to fund that largesse that uh, they actually had to cut equity partners mm -hmm. at a record clip. Any idea on how ALM put these numbers together? These are, have to be self-reported by law firms, right? Yeah, no, I have no idea. They do it, but it's really, it's kind of like the U.S. News and World Report for colleges. This is mm -hmm. what the corporate law firms follow in the AM Law 100. And we saw uh, unbelievable numbers. The biggest headcount reduction among the AM Law 100 uh, in, in at least 25 years of, of survey keeping. So this is pretty historic. Yeah, it, it's interesting to look at. Any clues uh, when you talk to your sources about putting this story together on how they got equity partners to leave law firms? I mean, that is really a tectonic shift yeah, it's in pulling, the industry. It's pulling teeth. I mean, it's a difficult thing to do. Um, I imagine there must have been buyout situations. I imagine um, uh, Certain partners were wooed at other firms, and these firms had to realize that they had to shore up money to, to put out retention packages there. I mean, it's kind of like how, uh, you know, the Senate convinced Nixon to resign. You know, at some point, the Senate majority leader and people from both parties drove to the White House and said, you got to go. Right. This isn't going to work. And so you have that kind of moral suasion and, and the really grim reality setting in of everybody being overworked, of morale being at recent lows. You and I have talked about all the coverage about the rethinking of the, the, the entire value of a law degree, even a top tier law right. degree. Right. The question that everyone who is a young attorney or a law student wants to know, are these changes permanent? Is this a cyclical trend or is this something that is going to fundamentally change the practice of law in the United States going forward? It's tempting, I think, to always say it's different this time, but there's no neat analog to this, right? The dot-com bust, mm -hmm. we thought that there was all sorts of excess put in there and, and people expanding out west into Menlo Park and Silicon Valley and San Francisco, but that seemed to have, have, have been absorbed rather decently at the early part of last decade. Uh, when do we look back in terms of an analog to this? The crash of 87, the, the 70s? I mean, this type of record-keeping doesn't hard. go back to the Great Depression, so I, I, do, I do think there's a general consensus that we're in uncharted territory. Right, well, we'll certainly be following it closely. Robin, I want to thank you so much Lee, for stopping by, taking thank some you. time out of your busy day. That's Robin Farzad. He's a writer here at Business Week. If you'd like to learn more about the issues we just discussed, go check out our offerings on BloombergLaw.com and also BusinessWeek.com. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching.